Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, First Baptist West Facebook Live, and we're excited about having you here with us tonight. Looking forward to a great show. And, and as you notice, we're, we're trying to get a little bit better here. Uh, John gave us a great introduction uh, thing here, so we're, we're, we're trying some different stuff. We're improving as we go along. I know last week, I uh, want to remind you that we had a little hiccup, but... Uh, don't worry about it. If something happens, I'm going to go ahead and warn you that if something happens and we go off the air for a second, hang on. We'll, we'll try to get back up. John works his magic pretty well. But we're so glad that you're here with us for our Facebook Live and hope you're doing well. And I think we got a great program for you tonight. We're looking forward to some good things. And uh, we've got a couple of great guests. We have Jeff Henderson of the M28 Ministries. Uh, if you're part of First Baptist West, you know Jeff. He's been in our church a few times. Uh, as, as we've called with the bridge ministry that we've been a part of for the last couple of years. He's going to be on the show talking about uh, how we're he's working and feeding uh, some people in need here uh, in Lawton and that we're a part of that. We fed this week and so we're excited about having Jeff on uh, to talk to you. Also later on in our program we have Craig and Lori Shelton, uh, longtime members of First Baptist West and uh, we're going to be visiting with them just a little bit and uh, see how things were going uh, with them. And so we're excited about this. Now one thing I wanted to remind you is that Elizabeth has been able to move this program over uh, to our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, after the show on tomorrow, then all of our shows from uh, Facebook Live have been moved to YouTube. So one thing I got to thinking about with all the binge watching that goes on, you would be able to go to our YouTube channel and watch and binge watch the entire first season of First Baptist uh, West Live, Facebook Live. So just want to remind you that, not that anybody would want to watch them all again, but hey, they're, they're there for you. Before we get started, then I want to talk to you about something, uh, about obsessions. Uh, we're looking here today, man, we got a lot of people watching, uh, Sylvia and Will and uh, Paula and Larry and just a whole bunch of people and some that have been on uh, before I got to look down to my phone. But we thank you for all for joining in. But we want to talk to you about tonight about obsessions. So what I want to do is I want to find out maybe some of the things that you've been obsessed with since you've been in this quarantine. Uh, some of the things that, that that you found yourself doing a lot. I want to share with you tonight real quick one of my obsessions. A few years ago, my family and I on a Christmas break decided that we were going to do a puzzle. And so as you see here, this was the puzzle that we all did. It's the Harry Potter uh, Marauder's Map. And man, this was difficult. As a matter of fact, I was so excited about it because I've never really done a puzzle except those that you find in the preschool that you take out six pieces and they got the forms all around them. I did those puzzles, but this is the first big puzzle I'd ever done. And so we, we decided to do this just a couple of Christmases ago. Well, we, we put it up because I really had not planned on doing puzzles again until we got a gift. And I got this gift from, my, uh, from what I'm going to call my former friend, uh, Robert Noddick. No, just kidding, Robert. You're still my friend. But Robert gave me a puzzle. And I want you to notice the number here. This is not a 1,000-piece a puzzle, a 2,000-piece puzzle, a 3,000-piece puzzle. Folks, this is a 4,000-piece puzzle. And so Robert gave this to us, and I, I was quite content to leave it in my, uh, in my house over in the corner until one day, just a few weeks ago, my daughter Jade decided we're going to open up this puzzle. So what I want to do to show you tonight is I want to show you a new episode that we're a segment we're going to call The Puzzle Watch. We have actually started working on this puzzle, and I just want to kind of talk you through uh, what we have. John's got some pictures here that we're going to show of this, of this amazing puzzle. So, John, why don't we show our first picture here, and you see that Jade, look at that. Jade is showing the bags. This is when she opened the box up, and I began to shake my head then thinking, oh, my no, what has she done? And so we, we, she opened the box, and, man, the obsession began. And so we look at the next picture. And uh, you'll see that that's what 4,000 pieces of puzzle look like spread out on our dining room table. And I was hoping that this thing would even fit. And so you see what it looked like. So then the progress began. 
and here's what it started out. That's one of the first pictures I took. You notice that the, the flowers and the water and, and the bushes and, and the church, all that is in there. We started working on that, and then we progressed a little bit farther along, and you'll see that it's gotten a little more, a little bit more. And so my obsession continued to grow, and there is the, one of the next to the last pieces, and then the last picture we have is that's what it looks like as of this point. As you see, it's bigger than my table. Uh, just the edges are hanging off the top and the bottom. It's just a little bit bigger. So that is my obsession. And so what we're going to do is every so often, we're going to show you how I'm progressing along with this 4,000 piece puzzle. Robert, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate this. So uh, we're, we're excited about it. So what I want to know is I want to see what are some of your obsessions? What's something that you've begun to do over this uh, time of quarantine that, you, that you, you'd like to let us know? So we have a lot of quotes here. Uh, a lot of people saying, wow, can't believe it. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, so, hey, that's my obsession. So a lot of times when I go home at night, uh, wake up in the morning after I do my quiet time and I do my exercise, and then, of course, we go... Um, I sit down and I work a little bit on that puzzle. My time slips away. So anyway, let me know what are some of your obsessions that you've been doing over this break. Uh, hey guys, everybody, John, Paul, Anna, Dwayne, Marie, good to see everybody. Thank you all for joining in tonight and uh, we're excited about you being here. Well, that's my obsession, so that's what I wanted to do. Uh, John is posting up, and we'll be posting up some question uh, throughout this so you can answer. It's kind of like a poll that you'll see pop up on your screen. What is your? What are some of your obsessions? We want to know about that, okay? So if you'll go ahead and let us know. So moving right along, I don't want to take up too long talking about my obsession. Um, of course, the next obsession would be growing my hair, as I am so way ready for uh, somebody to uh, uh, open up so we can get our get my hair cut. And so, uh, yes, I do realize uh, I do need a haircut. Thank you. I, I'm aware of that. So anyway, but what I want to do tonight is I want to start off our program after the session with three things that you should know about our church. So John, roll it. Let's get started. All right, the three things that, that you should know is the first one is that as you, if you probably have seen that I set on a video on Monday talking about the start, setting a date of, for our church start back. We do want to open up as soon as we can. And so we're excited about the prospect of doing it. But we, because we're wanting to not again know that the when we're going to start, but just as importantly is the how we're going to start. And so there's a lot of things that we're going to have to do with the safety of the people, the well-being, uh, being in compliances uh, to the ordinances, and making sure everyone is taken care of. Uh, we're, we're going to set a date of May 31st. And so we want you to realize that we're waiting until that week. And then on May 31st, we're going to try to start our church back just as soon as we possibly can. And so we wanted to be aware of that. Hey, guys, come on in. It's good to see everybody. Uh, so, so we want you to know May 31st, uh, but be praying for us as we, uh, try to, um, as we try to go along and, and make the decisions that we're having to make. So please uh, keep us in your prayer. So that's number three. The second thing that we want you to be aware of is Mother's Day. We're not going to be able to gather together on Mother's Day uh, in our church, but one of the things that we want you to know is that we always have a, a baby dedication on Mother's Day. That's been our tradition here at First Baptist West. And due to the fact of not being able to uh, meet together, what we're going to do instead of having a baby dedication, we're going to have what we're going to call the baby uh, recognition. And so what we're going to ask you to do, if you've had a child born uh, between uh, Mother's Day of last year and this year, and I know we've had several in our church, what we want to do is we want to recognize your baby. And so what we're going to ask you to do is to send us uh, two to three pictures of your baby, plus what I would like to have is a, a picture, a snapshot of you and the whole family. Because we want to be able to recognize God's blessing you with a new child uh, this past year. So we as a church can celebrate together and recognize, uh, recognize you and your family. So would you send that to us? And, and John, you'll have to remind me, what is the 
the web page that we, uh, the page that we wanted it to be sent to. FBW Lawton. FBW Lawton at gmail.com. FBW Lawton at gmail.com. So if you'll send that to us, then we're going to be making a video on the day of Mother's Day. We're going to uh, be showing that baby recognition uh, for you and your family, and we want to celebrate with you. So that's number two. The, the, number, the number one thing that we want you to be aware of, the last thing is the M28 Ministries. Uh, as you know, on Tuesdays, our church is helping Jeff Henderson, who, as a matter of fact, is going to be on the show here in just a few, just a few minutes. Uh, he, we're helping him, and our church has volunteered to do a Tuesday uh, morning and afternoon that we're feeding people. As a matter of fact, uh, we have a report that yesterday we fed 383 people um, through the M28 Ministries. Thank you so much for, for helping us do that. But we want to ask you to and encourage you to continue uh, to help us with that because it takes a lot of food, a lot of time uh, to, to put into that. So we're asking that if you could continue to uh, contact the church if you want to help us in any way. Uh, I do know that we're needing vegetables and desserts. Uh, that mainly is where we are. So please remind us, uh, please be reminded that we want you to be a part of that. And one other thing is that on the M28 Ministries is if you could help us in the serving. I know yesterday we went over there and Patrick Shebe was uh, was there from our church helping and they only had three people in the in there helping. So they could really use somebody else. So if you'd like to, uh, to help even serve, please let us know. Contact us here at the church uh, for for that. And so folks, that's the three things that, that we think you, uh, you should know through First Baptist West. And, and thank you for everything that you're doing. Before before we have Jeff come on, uh, last week we did a segment called Unsung Heroes. Well, tonight we have another group, uh, another pair of guys that we're going to honor because these two guys do a great job of helping us in, in our ministries of the church. So we want now to go right into our segment uh, and introduce to you two more very important unsung heroes at First Baptist West. So John, if you can, let's go ahead and start that video. Hey everybody, we're here this uh, this morning visiting with Will and David, and uh, these guys do a great job working for us at First Baptist West, but they are also very vital to the M28 ministries that we're doing as on Tuesday mornings as a church. So I just want to introduce these guys to you. We talked about last week some unsung heroes, that things that happen in the background. Well, these guys are in the background, but they do a great job for us. So I want to introduce uh, Will Ferguson and David King. They are part of our cooking ministry here at First Baptist West. They don't just cook for this time. They also do a lot of cooking uh, for our church on Wednesday nights. And Will, of course, is famous for his uh, Will snacks that he does on <laughs> Sunday night for our Bible study. And so we're real excited uh, to talk to these two guys because they work extremely hard. And so David is also a, a, a teacher. Uh, Will's a teacher and a supply for me as well. And David, of course, is a Deacon Yoke Fellow here at our church. And he is the uh, discipleship groups leader that, that we have at First Baptist West. So these guys are multi-talented and they do so much work, but they don't get a lot of credit. So today I wanted to show you a couple of unsung heroes in our church that are very, very important to our ministries. So guys, let me ask you just real quick, how is this uh, affecting you personally, this lockdown and uh, separation and all that? Either one of you can go first. How is it affecting you? Well, it really doesn't. Doesn't. Being a former soldier, being out, out in the bush and by yourself all the time and being locked in and uh, this part of the training and, and we was prepared a uh, long time ago for, for such a time as this. All right. David, what about you in Sunup? Oh, yeah, it hasn't really affected us that much. I mean, we're, we're loners anyway, so we're <laughs> used to it. And, um, I enjoy it. I've got a garden and stuff. I work in yards and stuff, so okay. I keep myself busy. And, well, very good. So, so I, it affects them differently than me because I love being there out. And so, uh, I, I, every time y'all walk in or somebody walks in, I go, "Ha, ah, people! I got to go see them." So, uh, very good. Well, what about serving? As I mentioned, you both. This is not this week on Tuesdays during this. This is not the only thing you guys do for First Baptist West. You guys play a big role in our ministries with with the supplying and the teaching and the discipling and everything else that you do not counting the Wednesday nights and the Sunday nights that you guys serve. So what does it mean for you to be serving 
First Baptist West? Well, I just want to always do God's will, where I can be a help. Uh, many years ago, and I told uh, Pastor Harold my story, how I ended up over here. I never heard of First Baptist West, and I had to Google it. And um, I recognize that God uh, plants a he's, he's fit and, and being an ordained minister of the gospel where I can uh, fit in to, to help this church out or move to higher heights. Uh, that's what I'm here to do. Man, David, what about you? You, you, you? you really just dove in after a while, man, yeah. and you went hardcore. And So how, how, how did that turn come about and, and how does that mean? What does it mean to you? Uh, this it means everything to me. Um, yeah, like you said, I did. I just kind of dove in. Um, it all started when I did a Bible study with uh, mm -hmm. Doug, uh, and uh, yeah, I kind of my eyes were opened and my heart was open, and I just went full speed ahead. And uh, that's you know, you let you let God uh, into your life. And you let him start leading, and doors open, yeah. and you just got to learn to walk through those doors and not question it. So, oh, go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, okay. Well, what I wanted to ask is, is uh, because you guys again do a, a lot for us. It's not just today on mm -hmm. every Tuesday, man. You, you guys do teachings and discipling and all that. I want you to to encourage everybody. When you're doing so much, does it seem difficult or does it seem like you're burdened down by doing so much for the church no um you gotta always be ready amen um because i remember the message that you preach uh uh being out of the box yeah you know and, and so now we're, we're out of the box and you have to be ready and for all you first baptist west ice and everybody else be ready because we're here to serve we're here to do god's will we're here to uh stand up and come to the forefront and whatever we can do to be a help and not a hindrance that's what we're amen. here to do amen good good well what, what i wanted to do is is as you're cooking now for the virus and times that we're now through the m28 ministries which we're spotlighting uh tonight on the program uh as you're doing that, you realize that, you know, you guys are cooking for about 400 people. Yeah. So you've been given that task. You you guys volunteered to do the, the, the entree. And mm -hmm. the rest of us are bringing in desserts and breads and things like that. Uh, what's your outlook for doing that for, for so many people? Well, we're both uh, food service sergeants in the military. And I, my favorite saying is too easy. Too easy. Yeah. yeah, too easy. 400, <laughs> we're used to feeding 5,000 or right. so. Uh, we both know what we're doing. We don't have to say nothing to one another. And we just get in here and we just kind of meet in the middle and, and get, get the job done. Yeah. David, what about you? How do you feel doing this? Uh, I enjoy it. Yeah, it's uh, great getting back in the kitchen yeah. again. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm back in the service and I'm, yeah. and I'm doing something that's other than for me. Right. Amen. And, and they are doing a great job. And, and I do joke with both of them uh, that when we had to shut down or during the summer, we don't do our Wednesday meals and stuff. Sometimes these guys, they just come up here and stare at the ovens wanting to know <laughs> when can we get started again. So you guys do a great job. Well, what I wanted to do before we close out, though, is I wanted to look at today's meal, your entree. What, what is it that you pre prepared here today, guys? Well, what we have here is an um, army dish um, the guy from the Japanese called yakisoba, which is a, a noodle dish made with soy sauce and, and uh, ground beef and peppers and onions and uh, ginger and sesame seed oil. Wow. Is that difficult, David, to do? Nope. That's an easy one. That's an easy one, yeah. An easy one, yeah. For, for us, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Spoken like true professionals, <laughs> huh? Someone like me, this would be, I would be devastated just trying to do this. But I'm telling you, it looks good. And it smells good, and and for and I told them before we started filming this that I hadn't had breakfast yet. So man, it's really tempting to grab a hold of a bunch of that, but we're going to resist because I know uh, we're going to be feeding. I talked to Jeff yesterday, and you know they're looking. They fed over three hundred and eighty uh, mm -hmm. yesterday, so today they're looking at maybe four hundred. Oh so uh, you guys, you do a great job, and I really appreciate y'all coming and letting me do this. This is kind of a reluctant thing on their part, yeah. but they they. Uh, <laughs> 
they allowed me to come in here and intrude in their space, and uh, they, they wanted to get allow you to hear about what they're doing for First Baptist West, but not only First Baptist West, but more importantly for what God is for, for His That's ministry, because yeah. yeah. everything we do is for Him. And guys, uh, you mean a lot to me as your pastor and your and friend, and you guys help me out so much, and you're there all the time, and uh, you truly are some unsung heroes being in the background. I know you don't do this for the glory. No. Uh, you do it for the Lord and yeah. you do it to serve people. And that even makes, uh, be honest with you, that makes it even better for me. That is yeah. You're using your talent, but it's yeah. not just your talent, but it's your heart. Yeah. And guys, thank you for that. And so uh, we're, we're going to uh, interview Jeff here in just a moment and uh, just let him be able to talk a little bit more about the N28 Ministries. But yes. you guys do a super job, and uh, I'm really you. proud of you. I'm honored to be your pastor and Thank to be you. your friend. So, all right, well, listen, these guys are really important to our church, and uh, we're excited that God has brought them to us, and we're using them. And uh, now we want to re- go back, and we're going to be interviewing Jeff so that uh, you can hear a little bit more about the M28 Ministries and what we're doing with feeding people uh, on Tuesdays, First Baptist West, but other t- groups are doing it throughout the week. So we'd like to encourage you to get involved with us and help us in any way that you can. All right. God bless you. And guys, we'll see you a little bit later. Thank you. All right. Okay. We really want to thank uh, Will and David. Again, they do a super job, man. And and they're called unsung heroes because it's somebody, people in here were making comments. They do it. That's why they like the background. They, they're in the back. And so they do a super job. I want to thank those two men, not just for the M28 ministry cooking on Tuesdays, but uh, just everything else they do uh, throughout the year with just not just the cooking, but the teaching and the discipling. And those guys are a blessing. So as you heard, uh, we do feed the, the uh, people of Lawton on Tuesdays. I have with us tonight uh, Jeff Henderson. And Jeff is the uh, founder of the M28 Ministries, and he heads that thing up. And so, Jeff, thank you for coming tonight, man. It's, I, pleasure. Uh, it's always good to, to have you. We've had you in our church a couple of times, but uh, it's good to have you here on the program tonight. Yes, I'm glad to be here. Well, good, good. Well, just a couple things, though. First of all, I, I, how are you doing? Oh, doing pretty good. A little tired. Yeah, but, uh, bit, uh, but we're doing we're doing good. Okay, doing good. so I, I imagine this is a busy, busy time for you, right? Yeah, most people, uh, I think, with the breakout of COVID nineteen, they went into the uh, stay home, and so things slowed down significantly for us, and and uh, for for most people, but for us, it kind of kicked into high gear, and we've been really busy. Right. So, so you've been feeding now for how many weeks have you been doing this? Uh, Mid March, so okay, so six weeks, six, yeah, six weeks probably. Okay, yeah. and what what's the average number right now? Would you say? I know we fed three hundred and eighty something yesterday. Yeah, we're we're probably averaging about maybe probably around three hundred as far as an average. Uh, today we fed three hundred and eleven. Okay, uh, Monday was three eighty five. Yesterday was three eighty three. So probably around a three hundred okay. to three twenty average. Okay, well, good. So the M28 Ministries is the overall ministry that you have. Mm-hmm. The Bridge Park Ministry was a part that we've been involved in for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, how are those? How is that working for you? Uh, well, we with the onset of this virus, we had to shut down the uh, uh, the Bridge Park Ministry. Right. Uh, and so we thought, hey, what what do we need to do about that, and how how should we respond? Uh, and I had never really, uh, I'd always told God that, Hey, I, I'm going to do this until you tell me not to. So, uh, as we talked about it, my wife and other uh, people involved with our ministry said, God hadn't said not to do this. Uh, this has just been a, a virus that's broke out. So we've got to keep going. And, and, uh, so we had finished the, uh, property just down the street, two blocks east of the bridge park. Uh, and thought, well, let's see how we can use it instead. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, we moved it uh, up to the uh, uh, 2001D Avenue uh, and uh, started, instead of meeting there uh, once a week on Saturdays, as we did in the park, we decided, you know, people are going to be hungry every day and this is going to get worse. And uh, as people are out of work and the uh, folks that we're serving are going to change. It's not going to be primarily a homeless. It's going to be people in need of, mm-hmm. of all right. uh, 
uh, walks of life that are out of work for do, you know because of this. So uh, that's that's how we started, and uh, we just began Monday through Saturday uh, uh, doing. Uh, uh, I think we started off with uh, thirty or forty meals uh, when we first kicked things off. Yeah, we thought, wow, that was that was great. So. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how we transitioned anyway to the what we call the bridge house. Right, uh, right. Uh, okay, now the last week I I think I came over it was last week if I'm not mistaken, yeah, so. and you were talking about and you took me out to the garage mm -hmm. in the area that you're looking for, uh, and you had mentioned to me that you're still now going to try to continue some of the handing out the diapers and things like that that we normally did at the bridge ministry. Yes. Uh, have you started that yet? Yeah, we've we've not stopped that. So oh, that's, okay. that's been going on for, from the beginning. Uh, we do it at the same on Saturdays, just like we did at the Bridge Park. Okay. Uh, so uh, during the serving time, uh, the eleven to one is our normal serving time at the Bridge House. We give diapers out during that time okay. as well. Uh, we've even relaxed some of the restrictions on that. Uh, in the normally at the Bridge Park, you have to have your child present and things like that. Sure. Now we don't do any of that, and just if they say they need diapers we give them there now one of the things that that i, I saw that's been impressive is that uh, before when we fed at the bridge park everybody lined up and just came through and we got their meals but uh you basically now just have one person come and collect the number of meals they need to take back to their house right that's that's our that's what you try to that's do that's what we right. try to do and that's in an effort to keep the uh number of people down to mm -hmm. as uh, uh, to as small as we can to try and you know this virus, as we know, spreads by contact. So uh, we're trying to keep that that number down. That's something that we worked with the mayor and uh, and that on early on as we were forming our plan to uh, get things started out there was you know to try and do some things to control how many people we had out there at any given time. So what have you seen? Uh, you mentioned the first the first day you did it, you fed. 36 meals? I think it was 30, 30 something, yeah. something like that. Well, what effect have you seen this have on people that, that not only the virus, but you being able to give them a meal when they come through? What effects have you seen? Well, at, you know, and you've been out at the bridge park with us many times, and while they're appreciative, sometimes they can be a little callous too. Right. Uh, I've never seen so much appreciation in all the years that we've been, ten and a half years at the Bridge Park. Wow. Uh, yeah. We uh, have had people that, even when they, in the in the past, would just say thank you, that would be kind of it. Now, uh, they're, they're really going out of their way to say, you know, we really appreciate everybody that you have out here, you know, yeah. coming to help and... Uh, and so many comments about this is the this is the only hot meal that we get. This is right. this is it. Right. Uh, so it's making making a probably a bigger a bigger difference than any of us may may know. Okay. Now one of the things that you also said uh, to me, you talked about open to be praying with and prayed mm -hmm. for. How, uh, what have you seen on that? Yeah. Uh, as uh, uh, as time has progressed and and the realness set in. Of you know the, what was going on, we saw uh, as they come through the line, uh, particularly as they are getting their food. Right at the end, we'll have a couple of people set up at the end to pray with them. We'll just ask them, "Is there is there anything that we can pray with you about?" And uh, they they're most of the time very quick to be very specific. Yes, yeah. would you pray for my wife is at home uh, and and recovering from a surgery or can you pray for my sister that's in another state that's sick right now or uh, for my job situation? Just what very specific things, not just, uh, and you know, it's not uncommon in the park ministry that sometimes if you ask, hey, can I pray with you? They'll say, hey, you gave me food, I'll let you pray. Yeah. And it's not like that. It's like, yes, please, please pray with me. I mean, there's times that maybe we're busy and we're trying to keep the line moving and uh, maybe we don't ask somebody, and I've seen the line stop several times, saying, "Hey, would you? Could you pray with me first? Oh, really? Yeah, yes, wow. yes, okay. yes. Let us let us do that. So that's cool. why we started putting people outside. Uh, we've got volunteers at the bottom of the stairs uh, as they exit off of the porch uh, that can spend a little more time with them in prayer. Um, we've even had some come to the Lord uh, Amen. out there okay. during that process and. Gave a young man his first Bible ever out there uh, last week. That's <laughs> oh, pretty praise awesome. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, you talk about volunteers. 
hmm. uh, that are there to help you serve and to pray. And how has the response been from? I don't want to name specific churches or anything mm -hmm. like that, but church in for, for volunteers that, that, you know, we talk about now during this time that the church building is empty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now's the time for the church to be out. How has the response been when you issue a call for the need for M28? Well, uh, especially in, in the first few, the first week or two weeks as we were trying to get things going, it was much like trying to roll a really big rock up a really big hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in, in the past, with the Bridge Park, we've taken on big projects. We've done block parties where we've had five, 600 people out there. Mm -hmm. And we'll get volunteers that come and help, and I can just pick up the phone and call you or call other people, and it's no problem. You know, we have every need filled, everything covered. Uh, so that was kind of my expectation when I said, "Hey, we'll do six days a week. That's, you know, that's what we'll take Sundays off. That's what God did. So that's what we'll do." And uh, so we 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 set it up that way, and it was a challenge mm -hmm. uh, getting volunteers uh, that uh, would even even cooking the food without coming on site. So uh, we just continued, and and uh, in, in those early days when I really was having a hard time businesses that were closing i'd like to shout out to golden corral they called me right off the bat and said hey we're having to close i have all of these all of this food can you use it uh, i said yeah wow and i said well, what do you have and, and folks if you can just imagine in, in your mind i'll make you all hungry again about going to golden corral under that sneeze guard all that great food that we used <laughs> yeah. to see oh so the steaks and the uh, uh, everything oh, wow we got all of that we got all of it. So the first four or five days we were able to feed people, they were eating Golden Corral's <laughs> meal. Well, I, I, I know things must have gone downhill from that point because I know what we served no, yesterday. It's gone, it's it's gone, it's, everything has been good. <laughs> no, we, it's good. Right, right. Yeah, right. In fact, uh, everybody has commented how good the, the food has been, uh, not just appreciative and not just being kind. Right. These guys are not quick to compliment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they were uh, have been very, very appreciative of the quality of the food and we joke about when this is all done that we'll just have to start a uh, post-COVID-19 diet program, you know, Amen. exercise you program. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I know you, you you don't have a crystal ball. You don't know the future. But what, what are your thoughts on how long this is going to go for the feeding? Now, we don't know. We know the coronavirus and all that. But right. what, what are your immediate thoughts of continuing this? And, and the reason I'm asking is, because the longer it goes, the, the need is still going to be there yeah. for churches and people to continue to uh, invest into your ministry. So yes. kind of an idea about that. Well, we, I, I think we're going to be going through at least June. Okay. Uh, and probably further, but uh, uh, the, one of the greatest challenges right now is the kids all being at home. And I know the schools are uh, working to feed them too. Right. Uh, but uh, the the families are home uh, as, uh, as a whole. Uh, many of them that come through are just out of work. So they're having yeah. to provide meals for themselves and for the children. So we're, uh, I'm sure there's some that we're feeding that may be having a, a meal, an extra meal. Right. Uh, and stretching it out where they may, may be able to spread it throughout their household for, for that day. And that's fine with us. But uh, I, I you know, the two things are uh, connected together, uh, the COVID-19 and, and uh, how long we'll have to be providing the meals. Sure. And we'll watch our numbers, and as the numbers drop off significantly, then that's an indicator that okay. uh, we probably won't need to do it uh, and can maybe get back to doing things the way we did in the park. But I think we're a ways off from that. And uh, just want to encourage everybody to uh, be, be smart right now. Uh, I know we're in this interview not wearing masks and stuff, but... Uh, I wear a mask all the time. I don't like them. I don't like wearing right. a mask. They're, they're not any fun, but uh, I think we could shorten this thing an awful lot if we would all wear masks right. when we do go out in public. So uh, some of the guys in line today have been a little hard on them. Uh, we've given masks out, uh, homemade ones that friends have made, the friends of our ministry uh, right. have made up, and uh, we hand those out. And I noticed about a third or so of the people in line I gave a mask to yesterday, didn't have them on today. <laughs> so I reminded them, I said, you know, when you go into a store, you know, there's a sign on a lot of stores that say no shoes, no shoes, no shirt, no service. 
I think I'm going to make a sign up here that says no shoes, no shirt, no mask, no food. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to stress the fact right. that, you know, we can help ourselves as right. well. So, right. uh, but anyway, I, I think we're, uh, we're, we've got a long ways to go in this and okay. uh, we're, we're in it for the long haul. Uh, and uh, with uh, churches like First West helping us uh, uh, do, with the food and, and, uh, and volunteers, yeah. Uh, Patrick needs some help out there. Amen. Uh, so, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So right. some volunteers out there to help uh, uh, help serve it. And uh, there's there's really only about twelve of us in, in M28 Ministries that are regular. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when you split that up over six days. Right. Uh, Not very many days uh, off. Yeah, huh? yeah. You get worn down and tired, right. and uh, it's nice. It really has been nice to have the churches, uh, obviously with the food, but it's been really nice having the help with the volunteers so right. we can. Right. Uh, work a day off in there for, for our team. Sure. Well, Jeff, I know, again, that you've been, I've been watching you because I go out there and I see and I know that you coordinating this and everything that you're doing, I know you're really busy. You're really uh, putting a lot of effort in, but we want you to know that we're praying for you. you. And I would like to encourage anybody in our church that, if, again, we're going to continue, as you heard Jeff say, at least through June. So we've got We've got some more times, so we're going to be needing uh, food, and we're going to be needing, again, uh, volunteers to maybe go and, and help serve, uh, be there to pray for people. Absolutely. Uh, now, one of the things, and, and you'll be seeing uh, all of our church members, John and I went out yesterday, and we did a little video shoot out there uh, because we want you to be able to see what they hear about us. Mm-hmm. They hear about what you're doing. They hear about us needing food. <clears throat> what we're going to do Sunday morning at the end of our service is we're going to show a short video of what it looks like oh, great. because yeah. we want people to feel safe when they go out there and, oh, yeah. and you do a good job of putting that together so I, I don't I don't want to keep you all night we could sit and visit with this uh, a lot because I enjoy mm-hmm. having company with you as a matter of fact you talked about this uh, we're not wearing masks but we did do social distancing because when Jeff mm-hmm. came in my first inclination was run over and hug him <laughs> and know, sh- yeah. shake his hand same with Lori and Craig wanted to shake their hands and hug them and but we're not doing that yeah. so uh, but we do appreciate what you're doing, and we're going to continue to pray for you. As, as, we, as we wrap this up for you, just one thing that God has shown you through this. You have some, I know he's probably shown you a lot of things. But if you could just say one thing as an encouragement to people that God's shown you. You know, God thinks so much bigger than we do. Amen. And, Amen. Uh, he, he has the finite details worked out. And yeah. Uh, there's been times where we're low on food, and I've had this happen throughout the years at the Bridge Park as well, but uh, somehow it seems like there's even more pressure, you know, to give the food when you know there's real hunger that's, that's right. going on right. uh, and the people in line, and we're running short on food, and sometimes the volunteers uh, that are in serving will get a little frantic and, and say, hey, we're, we're going to be out, and, and I just... Uh, try to remind them, hey, the, just fishes and loaves. Amen. And we've never run out. Today was one of those days. Amen. If we'd have had a 380 day, I don't know what we'd have done. But we had a 311 day. <laughs> but so you had enough. We had enough. Everybody Amen. Got so food. God supplies. Yes. Well, you know, so God is, is way bigger than we are, and he's got this all figured out. And uh, if we can just uh, uh, do our best to remember he's, he's still on the throne. He's still in charge. Amen. And he, he has a role for each of us to do. Uh, it may be cooking, it may be serving. Uh, it's always praying, but yeah. you know something that I uh, thought of early on as I was standing on the front porch of the house, beginning to pray to God and asking God how He wanted us pr- pr- to proceed before we ever started anything. And I was faced with we got to close down the bridge park, and that thought of God's not telling you to shut this down; it's just going to change how it runs. Right. And I had the idea, you know, M28 Ministries. The name is from Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Right. The Great Commission. So it's uh, uh, go being the operative word, action mm-hmm. word. Go into all nations, uh, make disciples, baptize them, and teach them all I commanded you. Right. And he reminded me, standing on that front porch, there's no caveat that says unless the coronavirus happens. Amen. Or unless right. war breaks out. Or right. unless this or unless that. There are no caveats. Right. The Great Commission applies to you, to me, Amen. to every one of us who are followers and believers in Jesus Christ. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. It really Amen. does boil down to that yeah. simple, doesn't it? Amen. Uh, so uh, I, I, I thought, you know, uh, okay, God, however this is going to work, we're in. 
yeah. and we started running. Uh, so, and last thing I'd like to say too is uh, this Saturday. I'm really excited about this. Uh, we've not had a, a time where we've had worship. Uh, I've got music playing out there, kind of not very loud, but so we can still hear uh, the food count and all that. Uh, but this Saturday at 10 o'clock. It won't be in the park. We're going to do it at the at the bridge house, uh, and right across the street, 20th Street from the bridge house is where there used to be several trailers parked, uh, mm -hmm. uh, mobile home type trailers, and it's empty now. The force got out there and mowed that whole thing right. with a push mower day. Uh, but Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, we're going to have a, a, a live worship out there. Amen. We're going to preach and have live preaching going on from 10. And I can't tell you how much excitement we're having from the people in line. That, yeah. and, and, that we started telling them last Saturday, and they're asking today, what time was that again Saturday? 10 right. o'clock. And so there'll be, it's on the hill. I just said, we're going to meet right there on the hill, and then we'll be over across the street with the equipment broadcasting. Amen. You know, so be in prayer about that. Okay. So absolutely, will. that's something everybody out there watching today can do is be Amen. praying about Saturday. Uh, I've got a baptismal. It's a, it's a stock tank, but yeah, it's our baptismal pool, and we're ready to baptize some folks out at the, out the well, bridge. We'll house. definitely be praying for you. Well, thank you. And so you've heard it. So let's pray uh, for Jeff and, and and the ministry. Pray for the people that he's ministering to. So Jeff, thank you for coming tonight, man. It's exciting to always get to visit with you. Can I pray over you real yes, quick please. before we before we transition here, mm -hmm. Father? We come to you and we thank you for your love and your grace, God. I lift Jeff up to you. I pray for his physical body. I pray for his spirit. I pray for all the volunteers that are there almost every day. That, God, you would just continue to energize them. Let them uh, mount up as wings of eagles and soar, Father, above these things. And uh, I pray that you'd bind Satan away from them. And, God, that you'd continue to provide as he is so elegantly claimed that you've already made all provisions. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we lift them up to you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, Jeff, thank you, brother. Thank God you. bless you. You. Uh, you know, folks, as we... Uh, move on. Jeff had mentioned something very quickly about uh, about uh, God's ways are not our ways. What I wanted to do today, very quickly, just just take a couple of minutes, is I want to read in Genesis 12 verses 1 through 4, and the Bible says, "Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you a name great, and you shall be a blessing." And I will bless those who bless you and will curse him who curses you. And in, all you, and in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. What I wanted to share with you on this very quick thing is Jeff was talking about God leading them and, and changing things up. The thing that I wanted you to do is understand that sometimes, and I know Jeff probably was... Um, maybe at times tempted to do this, is how we sometimes want to make adjustment to God's plans. Mm -hmm. That we see things and God calls us some, but yet we change it. Well, I wanted to show you just a very quick phrase in this text tonight. And, and it was, he says, and Lot went with him. You got to remember what God told Abram to do. Leave your house, leave your country, and leave your family. For some reason... Abram decided to tweak God's plan just a little bit, and he took Lot with him. Now you say, well, he probably had good reason. It was family, his friend, he wanted to take care of him. But, but I want you to think about something real quick. When Lot went with him, that changed some things because he obeyed God, but not to the full extent. He tweaked God's plan a little bit. And you say, well, was it a big deal? Well, I want you to look at Genesis chapter 13. The minute that they all got to where they were supposed to, in some area, the Bible says in Genesis 13 that the Lot's shepherds and Abram's shepherds began to fight. They began to argue. So Lot had to intervene. He had to come in and say, okay, look, here's some things we got to do. Problem we got to solve. And they split and, and let Lot choose the land. We go on down and we look in Genesis 18 that Abram then had to stop his life because he had to plead with God to save Lot who had gone into Sodom and Gomorrah, was hanging out there in places he shouldn't have been. So he, now he had to, 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 to deal with God on that. And then you say, well, what was the long-term effects? Well, the long-term effects, we can even look and see that Lot's descendants, the Moabites and the Ammonites, from that point on for throughout the, the, the history of the Old Testament, they were a thorn in the side of Israel. So we might say, well, it was just a minor tweak. But my friends, listen to me. 
we've got to learn that God is in control. And he doesn't think the way we think. He thinks better than us, more than us. So what we've got to understand is God is good. And listen, he knows what he's doing. So in this time of trouble and this time of uh, COVID-19 and all the things that we're doing, sometimes we want to get tempted to rush, to push, to, to change course just a little bit. But folks, we've got to remember God's in control and he desires our obedience. We're not partners with God in this. We're not God's partners. We're God's servants. And so I want to encourage you that no matter what's going on, listen to God, spend time in his word, seek his will, seek his desire, and then fully comply to the will of God. And it may seem like a small thing, and Lot went with him, but you understand what that meant. He wasn't doing exactly what God told him to do. So I just wanted to share that with you tonight and uh, hope that uh, that would be a little bit of encouragement with you. Well, I'm really excited about this next part as we're getting ready now to uh, bring on to our show uh, Craig and Lori Shelton, and uh, uh, they're longtime members of First Baptist West, and we're excited to have you on. And uh, man, I, I'm glad I, we, we talked them into coming. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Lori, for, for coming and being here with us. And we're, when Craig accepted, I got excited. Then when I found out y'all were actually coming here, as I told you when you got here, I was really excited because it it's like, exciting. people, yeah, I haven't seen them in forever. It's good to have <laughs> y'all here with us. So how y'all doing? Good. Uh, we're surviving. <laughs> surviving. I'm doing just what I always do. You, Nothing's you, changed for me. Nothing's changed, huh? Yeah. Craig, how's it changed for you? Well, so I'm teleworking now. Uh huh. And that's huge because... I don't have all the systems that work. I have a computer. I have all that stuff, but I don't have the two big screens where I can move stuff back and forth. Right. So it's it's I'm I'm about there now. Plus, uh, I'm taking a college course online. So, oh man. Yeah. So. You, you just you just pushing it, right? Yeah. Right. But well, it's, I, it's going. Well, good, good. Well, I, I, I was going to ask how long y'all been members here, but I guess I should say how many times y'all been members here at First Baptist West. Three times. We started in 95. Uh huh. So why three times? We never changed our membership. Yeah, we did. Did we? Uh huh. And Leavenworth. Okay. Oh, okay. And I then didn't we know came that. back. <laughs> well, you walked the aisle both times. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and then we left. Yeah. But we were in a chapel, so we didn't change our membership. Then right. we came back again. So the, okay. three times. So you've been on again, off uh -huh. again. We're, mm -hmm. we're honored that you're on yeah. again. And we pray that we're now that Craig's to retired and not going to be switched around we pray that this will be yeah. your final stop and it'll be a long it's home. good one it's home yeah and amen. it's because honestly a big part of it is because of this church because amen. i'm from maine he's from texas but um just some people in this church literally made us family more than just the family of god right. they made us almost as close as you could get amen so. very good very good so as many of you know craig is, is retired military and now you're working in the civil service mm -hmm. right yep and Lori, you work at the in a in a hospital uh -huh. which, which on hospital? post on post reynolds. okay you work mm -hmm. at reynolds uh so how's that affected you well the whole mask thing <laughs> Um, I'm happy to be talking to a person that's not wearing a mask because if I'm in my office I don't have a mask on but anybody that comes in their mask uh -huh. so it's kind of cool to see somebody's face <laughs> yeah. but uh, we kind of changed our mission a little bit we're really just active duty some dependents but mostly active duty just making sure the Army's mission Fort Sills mm -hmm. mission can go on right and the things that don't need to be done right now we're holding off on okay very good yeah. so have you seen have, have you seen change in the people that are coming in to you um and their thoughts and the way they they act and... you know i is that do you ever feel like these people just are not taking this seriously kind of like jeff said a lot of people at yeah. the park mm -hmm. and it's frustrating because they're soldiers <laughs> right you know so and i'm constantly mm -hmm. going behind somebody i feel like saying Put that up over your nose, you know, <laughs> mouth and nose. Right. But um, they're young, so, you know, they just don't, I don't think they get it. Right. I really don't. Now, the people I work with, there's been a big change. Right. You know, okay, we're good. just all a lot more conscientious about everything. We spread out more. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of alternate how many people are doing patients. Just like um, Jeff was saying, trying to limit the number of people that are 
with the patients for a day. Right. You know, like good. you might do them today, I'll do them tomorrow. Oh, okay. You know. Right. Good, good. Yeah. Well, Craig, you're also Deacon Yoke Fellow, and you do a great job uh, with our family ministries. What have you been noticing, as I know you, you've you been faithful to contact and get with people, what are you noticing about some of our people? Well, that they are, and I don't know if it's because of COVID-19 or whatever, they're very appreciative uh -huh. of, of Lori and I sending them notes and birthday cards. And, and I think, to your question, more me calling them, on a weekly or every whatever, however, whatever, and I get a chance to call them. Sure. Uh, I'm surprised at uh, some of the responses. I'm so glad you call. Thank you. And even some of them ask, "What can I do for you?" So, um, before I, I actually talked to uh, one of our members before, and we hadn't talked in a long time because right. he he's not been around, but. That's the longest I've talked to him in a very long time, and he was very appreciative and, you know, noticed some things that was going on in his life. So they're very appreciative yeah. of, of us calling them and contacting them. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. And I know that's one of the things that most people are missing. Yeah. Uh, as I share with everybody, uh, anybody walks into our church, whether it's to bring offerings or to get the pans or to bring food, one thing that I hear every time is, man, it's so good to just be in this building. Mm -hmm. Just good to be in this building, yeah. and, and so I, I, I thought that people would, but I appreciate both of you, and Craig, appreciate y'all contacting your people, and, and I know that they need to know that we're still mm -hmm. focused on them, so great job. Mm -hmm. But you not only do that, but you're also Sunday school teachers. You, you, <laughs> yeah. you teach, well, yeah, on top of everything <laughs> yeah. else that you do, you now teach a Sunday school class. Yep. And you were, you were real quick, both of you were real quick when we brought out the idea of the Zoom. I'll be honest with you, I was a little nervous presenting that to all of our teachers saying, hey, we're going to do this on video. And I was afraid everybody go, wow, we've never done it that way before because <laughs> we are Baptists, you know. Yes. Uh, yes. So, but you guys were really quick to accept it and to jump in. How, how, how is that going for y'all? It's going great. It's going really well. Um, we are, we're able to facilitate with people that don't normally come mm -hmm. uh, we've actually had people chime in that that really hasn't been a part of our class based on some things that you've done with with the zoom uh, so it's gone it's gone well I will say that I was thinking man I'm not sure how this is going to go over because I do well like right now talking to you right, in front right. of you yeah just just my I and Lord's the same way and at first I was like okay guys Give me something. <laughs> but now it's it's actually after the after the first week, people are more confident and you know receptive to the whole process. So. Well, there is something whenever you put a, a camera and you look at yeah. a camera or you look at a, a computer with the you know the camera is there, it kind of makes you go. You know, you don't know what to do. Well, you know, we actually had a couple of, of people in our class. They wouldn't do the video. Oh, really? Right. For the first week. And then the next week they did the video. Mm -hmm. So okay, yeah. So and in class, uh, right here in the building upstairs, we normally average about seventeen. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And we've been having. Last week was the first, the lowest we've been in was twenty three. Wow. Yeah. Praise yes. the Lord. Except maybe the first week yeah. was twenty one. Yeah. To get but people used yeah, to. Yeah, it's been yeah. twenty five for okay. a few weeks, and wow. it's kind of <clears throat> neat because one group is actually a whole family. They do it all. Oh, you know, there you go. Even their yeah. teens are in with us. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. You know, Very it's, good. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's neat. It's good. It's fun. And we still joke some. We still... Yeah, we, the only thing is, you know, when we come, we get here early, you know, upstairs. Yeah. Well, I, I'll be sitting there early. There's nobody there. <laughs> so I <laughs> can talk to them. <laughs> but it, it, there's... Last week, people were chiming in early. We got to actually yeah. fellowship. And okay. uh, hopefully now that'll, that'll get better. Uh, but it's like Laura said, it's been it's been good. Well, I know there's some disadvantages because you know you you yeah. can't be there with them. You can, yeah. Have you what what is maybe an advantage of having it like that? What are something you've seen that's actually been not better than being in class? I don't right. mean that, but that's actually allowed to say, hey, this this has been good. Have y'all recognized anything that? Well, more people are sharing. Yeah, and okay. you know, Bonnie asked. Do you do you feel like the class is closer? And it's kind of strange, but it is. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's because it, we're all we got, but <laughs> I, but I feel like um, I feel like it's more intentional, which is silly because 
we're right, right in our house. Right. You know, we might have on a cute shirt and pajama bottoms. You know, like you said, yeah. I'm wearing sneakers. You guys yeah. are in pajamas. I only do that one week, though. I felt really <laughs> bad. So, <laughs> But I just feel like, you know, they are intentionally getting yes. in front of their computer Amen. and taking this time. Right. And um, even some of the things we've prayed about, um, I and I found this for myself, I'm praying more for other people that I might not, you know, Stan, constantly. Right, um, right. You, I mean, and we pray for you. It's not that, but it's thinking, okay, he's getting ready to do this. It's Wednesday evening. He's getting ready to do this. It's Sunday. Now you always do something, but right. it's just different because I know it's different. You're yes. a people person. Right. So this is really different for you. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So I feel like we're just praying more for yeah. different things rather than just our little your, your, you know, your general dog that's sick or anything. Yeah, yeah. you're now dealing yeah. with specific yeah. needs that you know people, people are experiencing. You know, yeah. just a heart, more heart for people. No, you're right. And and normally when we finish Sunday school, you know, we do the early service, so we would leave. Uh, we still kind of sit around and talk a little bit, um, but the technology allows us to communicate even after Sunday school is over. Yeah, I forgot right. to say this. So that's an advantage uh -huh. uh, because somebody may text me in, in, in church or Sunday school and I won't see it for a while. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I mean no, no I after understand. the Sunday school, I may right. not, you know, like, you know, so sure. one, of, one of the families that had an accident last week and we didn't know until after Sunday school. Oh, but right. it was right after we saw it. We right. would not have saw, saw that. Right. Immediately, mm -hmm. because we're getting our own little, yeah, you know, you get busy right. doing your but thing. But like Lori said, it's intentional, and well, and I think that's the main thing, and I honestly believe that's the way God would have the church even be more of, mm -hmm. right. is being more intentional about what we're doing more than generalities. Than right. just doing Sometimes it. we can just be general. Lord bless the people. Lord mm -hmm. seek the lost. Lord right. this. Lord help. But now because of this, we're. But we are focused in and mm -hmm. intentional. I really believe that's where God has for us. So what, what would you say, uh, and I'll wrap it up. I won't keep you on here long, much longer. So maybe some goals that you have for your class from here until the time we can get back together. What, what would you like to see in your class, in your fellowships or whatever? Have you got some thoughts toward what are you going to do from well, here? We've kind of already started doing some things. We've, uh, we've dev it out some responsibilities okay because as you mentioned i'm a deacon yoke fellow i'm still doing work and then it's it's kind of hard so yeah. what we did is we divided our our class into families just like family, oh, just okay. like deacon families yeah. deacon families yeah. and we put one family in charge of those families and so for example just as one thing we do on wednesday or thursday i'll send the verse out for this sunday school lesson okay send this to your families mm-hmm and they sent it out instead of me sending it to everybody. They, I let them connect with, wow. with yeah. them. And then if somebody doesn't show up, I'll call them, but I want them to call them too. Amen. So Amen. those are things that I think we're going to continue to do. Right. right. We always wanted to do it. But we, yeah, now, we did. We now always we wanted. Actually now we're doing actually it. doing it. So we got, it's called, a, it's called a Sunday School Family Tree. Okay. And it's, it's divided into four groups. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Well, that that was about what I was about to ask with your goals. Are you seeing things that you want to carry over? And mm -hmm, that, that yes. I guess, would be well, I one of those. For one thing, people know more than just me and Craig care about them. Yes. Right. Yes. And, you know, I mean, right. we're a small group. We all know everybody. But still, you know, it's okay for you to call somebody and them to tell you their needs, not just yeah. us, you right. know? Well, and, and, and one thing, guys, that sense. I found out, too, is that uh, I know they want to hear from the pastor. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But when they hear from somebody that's not the pastor, because that's what I'm supposed to do. Right. They expect right. the pastor to call. Right. But when the Sunday school teacher, yeah, Craig, you're supposed to call. Lord, you're supposed right. to. But what about when this person calls me? It's like, wow. Like one of the family leads calls some people, and she came back to me with a whole bunch of information. And I thought I probably would have never got that information yeah. because of your point. It's me. Yeah. I'm the facilitator of the leader. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of a military thing, too. Right, right. sure, yeah. sure. Well, that's exciting. And, yeah. and just hear some of the things, and, and I hadn't heard, and mm -hmm. I'm glad you, we talked about this because I hadn't heard some of the things that mm -hmm. you're doing. But I would encourage you, yeah, carry some of this stuff yes. over. And, and, and as far as even the Zoom, 
Uh, I really think that's something that we as we're talking now as staff that maybe even when we begin to get back together, maybe Zoom is not such a bad, the teleconference stuff right. is not so bad because you get, might have some people that right. aren't so, even able to be in church. Right. So we're trying to figure out, we talked about how to, went actually the first week, how to Zoom it while we're upstairs. It, it, uh, you know, see the guy right there? That'd be the guy that would tell us what <laughs> yeah, to do. Yeah, that's why I looked at it, my, but that's down the road. It's just, it's sure. the No, but I think that's something that, that uh, because of, of the availability, mm -hmm. sure. even, you know, when we did started the live streaming right. long before, not long, but before we did this, what was really cool was on Monday, I would have some of our, maybe a senior adult come in that had been sick on the weekend. Mm -hmm. They come in and said, thank you so much for doing that because we would not have been able to be in church mm -hmm. Sunday. We weren't able to be there, yeah. but we got to listen. When uh, when one of our members and, and, and his wife, he, he was passing away, mm -hmm. uh, really sick, couldn't come anymore. That's one of the things that she told me was that it was very comforting every Sunday morning. They could still be in church, mm -hmm. yeah. and he wanted to be in church. He wanted to yes. see. And so I, I think God is opening up some great mm -hmm. things for us. And, and it's back again to, I believe, that intentional. Mm -hmm. That we need we as a church are going to be intentional in what we're doing. Uh, is, is there something that God's showed you as we get ready to wrap up? Something that y'all like to say, well, God has shown us this as a family or as an individual that, that maybe or yeah, that you'd encourage or maybe even a scripture well i have a couple of scriptures <clears throat> um one is because i i'm i am very much flexible i can change but uh but i still make plans <laughs> <laughs> and one of the and everybody's laughing at us right now. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the scriptures is Proverbs sixteen nine. A man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. Just that fact of, you know what? We have absolutely no control over Amen. this. I mean, this is one thing that nobody has control over except God. Right. And I, I tell myself a lot about a lot of different things. What Jeff said, God is still on the throne. Amen. And you know, you shared that way early on. He will be on the throne when this is all over. And that part's not going to change. The other thing is um, thinking about Joseph. You planned evil against me, but God planned it hmm. for good to bring Amen. about present result, the survival of many people. And um, people that are hearing the word, maybe unchurched, but also some believers that have just quit going to church. And yeah. you know, right. I, right. there's people in our families, and I think they are actually seeking it out now and they mm -hmm. might listen to two or three or four pastors right and that's exciting somebody that used to just come through and get food and maybe some clothes and diapers decide you know what these guys are here six days a week there's a reason amen and they're coming right. to know the lord that without covid that might not happen amen you know so Absolutely. god god has a plan yeah craig what about you so two things one i think um, in the midst of this storm if you want to call it i think as christians this is an opportunity for us to reach out right uh even like jeff said we're in our homes we and he's doing it we can reach out to people who aren't as fortunate as we are in some mm -hmm. kind of way and i think we've done that with our sunday school class um and for me i think that's where it needs to start because i don't believe i could reach out to anybody else if i don't reach out to my class and my families first yes Right. The second thing is in Isaiah um, 40, 31, it says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Yeah. And we got to be careful with that verse because it doesn't mean we got to sit and wait. It Amen. means seek the Lord. <laughs> right. right. And I think that's what we should be doing right now, seeking the Lord, because he knows what's going on. Yeah. He wants us to talk to him and tell right. him what we're dealing with. He knows our needs, but he wants to connect with us. And I, and I mean, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on and my mind was spinning and I was like, okay, God, what are you saying? <laughs> and uh, I mean, there's other stuff, but those are the two big things. Amen. Well, guys, I really appreciate y'all and love y'all. And it was good to have you here and get to visit with you. Yeah. And, sure. <laughs> uh, so we're going, we're going to wrap this thing up and we're excited that all of you joined us tonight. But before we close out, I want to, want to pray over you guys, if mm -hmm. you don't mind. And Pray for our church and want to encourage you to join us at 1045 on Sunday morning on our live stream service. Also go to our 
uh, go to our website and you'll find the list of all of our classes that are doing live stream. And we want you to pick one of those and join in. Craig and Lori will be there on there. Uh, we've got others. We've got five other groups that are meeting. So mm -hmm. I want to encourage you, if you're, if you're in a church even that doesn't, that's not able to do it, we're not trying to recruit you to our church, but we just want to minister to you. So if you'll go to our, our, um, our webpage, uh, there it's on the screen there. If you'll go to our webpage and look at down through there, uh, you'll be able to find those six classes. And these all start around the 9.30, but they'll be open 915 or so, 910, I'm on Whenever nine Craig gets up there and oh, turns it on, man, <laughs> you guys will be able to join us. And But we do want to encourage you uh, to be also praying for Jeff and, and the sure. M28 Ministries. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate him being here tonight. We look forward to uh, seeing you all or you seeing us because we don't get to see you. <laughs> but you seeing us on Sunday morning at 1045. Let me pray with you and then I'll pray over you guys. And again, thank you all. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to have this program tonight. I thank you for Craig and Lori for what they mean to me, uh, what I know they mean to this church, and more importantly, what I know they mean to you. And God, I thank you that they gave of their time to be on here tonight. I pray that you'd continue to bless them as a family. Lord, bless uh, their lives and, and their occupations. And Lord, and the people they come in contact with every single day, may they continue to be a witness to you. And for you and God may you just bless them uh, in, in their ministries here at the church through the Sunday school through uh, the Deacon Yoke fellow ministries that God you would just continue to give them encouragement you would continue to give them wisdom and father continue to give them a heart uh, for their people and God we look forward to what you're going to be doing through this as they have said and Jeff has said God you're still in control of this you're on your throne and we thank you for that and Lord, we just pray your continued blessings and healings upon people. We pray for the leadership of our nation, our state, and, and our, our local government. God, that you would bless those leaders, give them encouragement, and give them peace. And Lord, we, we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you hopefully on uh, Sunday morning. Join us at 1045 and Sunday school uh, small groups at 930. And we hope that you'll have a great week. Remember, remember call us here at the See church you. if you need anything at all. And we'll be able to help you all that we can. God bless you. Have a great week and, and rest well. We'll see you later.